Hi guys, so this is our landscape painting demo for digital illustration. I'm going to show you how to paint an environment uh, with grass and trees and all sorts of things. Um, and I'm actually going to get into uh, some pretty good detail here. So what I'm going to do is start with a new layer, layer one, and I'm just going to uh, pick a smaller brush and draw some sort of trees or paint some trees in the background. Um, and I started with the blue because this is outdoors and I wanted this guy to be a little blue but uh, also a little hazy, maybe um, almost overcast, sort of. So what I'm going to do now is draw a little bit of, at a low opacity, on a different layer, a little bit of um, like a background hill or forest covered mountain. So you'll notice that I went down and selected a slightly darker value than the background, than that background blue, in order to paint these little textures here. And sometimes, you know, you'll be painting over them, and if the brush is at low opacity, you'll see that there's like a little bead here, and there's a there's an overlap. If you don't want that, then this is a good opportunity to show you. You go over to the color with your color picker, or your eyedropper tool, and you select it. And then you just go to full opacity. And then you could just, you know, keep drawing and then lifting your pen off the tablet and not worrying about putting more paint on that's going to make sort of a seam or a bead or something like that. And there are many ways to do that, but that's just one way. So we're going to make this little, you know, sort of hill in the background that runs behind. And that's about it for that. I just want to uh, now switch to a bigger brush and fill it in so we can get moving on the rest. Now, um, after I do this, I'm going to, I, was, I can always go back to that layer. I'm going to show you how to start with the background, like I'm doing here, and move forward. That's the key to painting landscapes. Almost all my landscapes are start with, you know, the background sky. Then I start with some sort of mountain or something like I painted here. And that's really going to help um, in the end. It makes the painting process more efficient. Because now what I can do is I'm going to still keep it a little desaturated because you want your background elements to be desaturated. But now what I can do is just switch to a smaller brush. I'm using the hard round pressure size. And draw let's take the big brush and just draw like some sort of ground plane. So it can be really rough. I want it eventually to look like like a hilly plane or something like that. But with, you know, the beginning of a forest in the background. So a little bit of an uneven surface. Now what I'm going to do is start a new layer and use that same value to draw in oops, the next part. And that's going to be some trees. So what you could do is, I mean, you wouldn't do this with this, this, this deciduous trees. You'll do this with coniferous. Um, but not always. They're usually pretty straight. So what I'm going to do is click down, hold down with my brush, and then press Shift. And then I can draw a straight line. Then I could draw one that's a little wavy if I want or whatever, but I could always go back and erase it if it's a little too wavy. But that's pretty much the difference between the two strokes. And you want you want that straight line for a pine tree. Some pine trees will be a, um, like a little off, maybe a little bent like this one. Um, but that's basically the process. And then I'm going to increase the size. Maybe I'll make some over here. I'm going to draw a line down there. Then I'll 
change the size up a little bit more and maybe put one like right here for instance and then I'm gonna change the size to an even thicker stroke and put that right here here we go and then I'm going to maybe just draw a couple more on that layer that's just like the you know the second layer that we're working with so maybe like one right here and then we could always come back and erase that but it doesn't look good then another one right here and then maybe there's a, a tree that starts here and then maybe just ends down there and then there's uh, maybe just one more here oops right here and then uh, just a couple more and we'll move on to the next layer so oops so that's pretty good for now now I'm going to just put in a little actually before moving to the next layer I'm just gonna put in a little more um, detail so on that same layer layer 2 I'm going to draw some some little limbs and things Some of these will be sticking out, some of them will be sticking down. Some of these thicker trees will have longer limbs, some will have thinner, just for a little variety. It always go thick to thin, that's why I'm using the pressure size brush. Then we're gonna put some here. Maybe there's another tree right here and it has you know, a couple little branches, sort of like a Christmas tree-ish set up there. It can be a little rough. You can always come back and fix that later. Then we can have a couple little branches sticking off here. Another one there. And so on. So I'm just going to finish these off and then move on. Here we go. And you want there to be some variation. You don't want there to be too much um, like of a pattern. Objects in nature, of course, as I've been saying before, a little more variation and less symmetry in most cases, especially trees. So you want the, you know, your paintings to reflect that. So now what I'm going to do is start a new layer which can be layer three, and then I'm going to go forward and darken up the values again. So the reason I keep doing this is because I keep bringing things forward. So this layer three is the third layer of trees that are closer to us. They're three times closer to us, in other words. So what I can do is I can either fill them in or I can go back to a bigger brush size and use that shift click method make that there then I can reduce the size and click shift here maybe it's thicker at the bottom there and then I can do the same here oops and that'll happen if you click out of order if you hold shift first. Remember to click first and then hold shift. So now we got some closer trees and this tree can probably be the closest so I'm gonna make that the darkest one. That's the darkest. Now we've got a pretty good range of different trees and things. We could switch back between different layers, but what I want to do now is just you know, put in the limbs for that tree. And notice how I'm still using blue. I'm not getting into any color yet. And I'm keeping it pretty rough. You know, I could always come back and fix up these branches, but I want to give you the general idea of how to do this. And then I can always select the eyedropper or the color picker and go back and you know, 
work back into these branches here on that same layer. With that hard round pressure size brush. I'm probably going to make my own brush for um, the little details and textures on the trees in a bit later in the lecture, but in the demo. But we got to focus on these larger forms first. Big brush to small brush, big shape to little shape is always the way to go. And I said that before. And I'm just going to put some darker branches on this one. And then we're pretty much all set with those. I think that's good enough for now. So now what I'm going to do is work on a little bit of this grass plane because I don't like, of course, how, how these look right here, these trees that meet the crown. So what I'm going to do is switch to a different color, like a darker green. and use my big brush to cover a lot of a lot of area with that. So I'm just gonna use my big brush to uh, you know, cover that area with green. And I think I might just, yeah, I might do that on a different layer because I don't wanna take any chances. I want it to be a little easier to work with later. That's the reason why I use so many layers, and that's what I want you guys to do as well. So that looks good for now. And um, what I'm going to do is take a little bit of a, a desaturated green, same layer, and lower the opacity a little bit, and select a soft round brush, and just a little darker and just go over that. This is just the underpainting for the grass. I'm going to go over it later with textures and details and all that. So let's cover that up. And we could put a little more blue on the top to just make a better transition at a lower opacity. So I'm just setting up, I'm laying all the groundwork down, I'm setting up the scene here. So there's a little bit of variation underneath before I start putting on textures and things. Now what I want to do is grab that green from the bottom and start a new layer for the grass details, which I would label grass details, and go to a hard round pressure size, smaller brush, And then I'm going to just increase, change the color just a little bit, increase the lightness or the light value of what I'm going to draw here. And what I'm going to draw is, you know, a bunch of different grass textures. And what I'm doing is I'm not, I'm not going to draw the entire tuft of grass every time I put down a little tuft is one, two, three already. I'm just gonna <clears throat> I'm just gonna put down the, the very tops of those sprays of grass and maybe you know some ferns and things. So in the background, while I'm doing this, I'll tell you that I have a lot of reference up for ferns and grass and trees and things like that, just so that you know I can refer to that as I'm working. And of course, it's going to look a little rough in the beginning. 
but that's okay because that's you know that's expected. So you want some variation. You don't want too much of a pattern. You want some more ferns over here, perhaps. Well, you want to take your time. I'm just going a little fast because of the demo. I don't want the demo to be too long. But you want to take your time when you do this, especially in the rough stages, which is what this is. But you want a pretty good you know, filler here for all the grass. And you want some good color variation in the end. Now, what I'm going to do is zoom in. And I'm going to you know, sort of beef up these in terms of value and you know, lighter values and things. So I'm going to move up on here, the little color window, and go over to some of the uh, some of the objects in here and increase the opacity just a little bit, maybe to 35, so I can start adding some detail in there. And now I'm just really highlighting certain objects, like the ferns and things. We could go over that later. This is still sort of the undercoat. Maybe the fern comes up in front there. And then I want to sort of highlight these as well, these other little plants here. This is probably going to be the most time-consuming part of a piece like this if you choose to do a forest with grass and stuff but it's worth it because you want you want it to be that way you want the foreground to be very detailed high contrast high saturation and sharper than the midground and, and background you want the foreground to have all of those qualities And when you're doing this, you want to make these little radiating strokes, as I'm doing here. I'm going clockwise, making radiating strokes on almost all of these. There are many, many, many different ways to paint grass and things like ferns and all that. And this is just one of many in Photoshop. So let's zoom out and check it out. So we're starting to see some, some grasses and things there. And uh, it's its own layer. So we can always you know go in there and manipulate things. But before I come back to that, the last thing I'm going to show you is just how some highlights look there. Now you want some highlights in the middle of these grass tufts as well so that they look a little more full. And sculptural. And not just, you know, like a flat spray of grass. That's why I'm putting a couple highlights here in the middle of these little tufts that I'm painting. But I'm being careful with the highlights not to cover that mid-tone value that I just put down. I'm going to leave a little bit of that so there's almost like a transition between the two, the highlight and the mid-tone. We 
we need some of that in that fern. And a little bit over here as well. I'm not going to do all the grass, but you get the idea. That would take too long. And then at some point, you're going to just need to, you know, put some darks in there, darken things up. Oops. Which is what I'm doing now. Put some darks in there, but keep keep in mind some of the textures. You don't want to just like throw some dark shapes in there haphazardly. You want to also sort of hatch them in as if there are grass textures in the darkness as well. They're not just going to be shapes of darkness. Sometimes like over here, for instance, maybe there'll be a couple little grass blades visible there and then the shape of darkness will be on top of that. And we can work that back in. And this is more or less a traditional media painting technique. Just putting on some darker washes or some darker paint between the little nooks and crannies here. And that really, really brings out the, uh, the grass patches and the tufts. Especially in the foreground, um, those tufts that are really, really close. We want there to be a lot of contrast there. So that's pretty good for now. That's a nice little you know, rough start. And you, it can carry over into these, you know, areas over here. But what I'm going to do before I, you know, take a look at that again is I'm going to start painting in some branches with needles and pine needles and things like that. So I'm going to go back to this layer. And I'm going to reduce the brush size. And just basically zoom in and paint based on my reference some little pine needles and things maybe even smaller so let me select that color and make sure I'm on the right layer here and then I'm going to go down here and paint the little tree details So I'm doing this while looking at the reference. I'm trying to look more at the reference than I do at my actual painting so that eventually, you know, these, these little details look more like they do in the reference rather than me just trying to you know, fidget or fuss with what I already have on my canvas. So some of those little sprigs and pine needles are going to shoot up like this but most of those are going to come down. And eventually what you can do is you can make your own set of little brushes for this. That'll make it a lot faster. But I did want to show you my me going through the, through the motion of making these little branches and what kinds of strokes I use and in which direction they go. And what they're doing for the tree. And basically, when you're making these marks, especially for a pine tree, you want to make sometimes a little branch, and then it's almost like a fern. You want to sort of crisscross perp with perpendicular lines over that, that little branch. Crisscross over that one, and then maybe there's one there. And that action will that brush action will get you some really quick pine needle looking branches and twigs and things like that and limbs. It's all about that cross hatching.
and it's also a good idea to just like you know, take these these larger limbs and put some extensions on them like I'm doing little branches that extend out but of course with a smooth transition so now that you know sort of how to use that that hatching system to make the uh, the little pine needles and pine branches. Let's zoom out a little bit. And we'll take a look at that. And you can see that, you know, from far away, up close it still looks very similar to what we want, but from far away it looks even better. Um, so that's good enough for now. Now we're getting an even better sense that this is a, you know, a space with, with distance and objects that advance, objects that recede. We can even go in there and darken up all of these objects here. So, and I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to a darker blue and just a little bit of a bigger brush. It's a little too dark, so I'm going to bring it up a little bit. A little bit of a bigger brush. And now I'm going to stick within that little shape there. I want my light source to be coming from the, the right. So on the left side of the objects, of course, I'm going to you know, darken everything up. But while I'm darkening things, you see how I'm leaving a little bit of that original mid-tone value. And I'm sort of painting in some, some tree textures and some you know, wrinkles and barks and things like bark textures and things like that. So we got our dark value on the left, our terminator here, where the texture transitions from dark to light, and then our lighter side. And that eventually you want to cover with something like like a really low opacity brown, for instance. Because that's closer to us. It doesn't need to be blue anymore. If it stays blue like this, it's going to look like it's further away or part of the background or something like that. So what I'm going to do is use this quick selection tool and select everything here. And then I'm going to use that brown because it's a rather brown tree. It is a you know pine tree, so I'm going to put that brown over everything, make it look you know a little more earthy. I'm going to use a little bit of a darker brown. There we go. So that makes it a little more earthy and advances the object, it makes it look a lot closer. And that's what we want. What I can do is highlight some of these you know, little mid-tones and add in a little bit of a, you know, a grayish tone or something like that, or maybe one of these lighter browns by zooming in. And then taking a, a little bit of a smaller brush size. And then we're going to, a little lighter, there we go. And we're going to draw in some little highlights. So these are still. I mean in the mid-tone range, but they're eventually going to be the highlights. This is sort of like setting up the highlights, the base of the highlights. We have a pretty good 
little pine tree texture going there. I'm going to go right up to the edge, put those lighter values in with the most pressure, and then we can put in some, some little highlights with a smaller size brush. And you want the tree to um, ultimately look like a cylinder. You know, you want it to be sculptural and round. So that's why I'm going back in here and adding a little, a few, a few more of those, those like darker blue mid-tones. And then I'm going to go really dark. Get a little green there. It's okay if you get a little green in there because, you know, there's always all sorts of growths on pine trees and things like lichen and moss and they're reflecting other pine needles and leaves and then what you want to do is finally put in some darks at the very very edge on the left there so that you have a tree that looks you know really round I'm going to darken up some of those little pits and things in the wrinkles. So that from far away, you know, it looks more or less like a pine tree with some, some details and things. And a good transition from light to dark. So then what we want is on that same layer we want a little shadow, we want some sort of base. So what I'm going to do is throw down a little bit of a base for that tree, the roots and things. And we can add those highlights to these roots later, but we want some sort of shadow. So I'm going to turn up the opacity a little bit. We want a shadow under these trees. Turn it up full for this. Full opacity for that big one. And when you're putting in those shadows, you want to make these, these strokes that I'm making here because you want the grass to look like it's coming up to the tree. And part of that shadow is going to be that grass texture. Where the shadow is going to carry across into this other tree's shadow. Maybe over there a little bit. This tree is going to have a shadow as well, which I'm just color picking to make more accurate. Some of the so some of the grasses over here. Let's go back to layer four, are going to look like they're sort of encroaching. Coming in from here. And I'm going to start turning down the opacity so that I get, you know, a bunch of little different sprays of grass and things like that. But I still have a, a, a sense that there's some mist in there. And, you know, this is like a misty forest with some atmosphere and some, some aura. We want to cover up that, that gradient or that transition to look more natural. So that it eventually blends into where the trees 
or their shadows in that mist, or the trees cast their shadows in that mist. So that's why I keep lowering the opacity as I'm working up toward the trees. So it's okay to be a little, little scribbly and rough here. But let's zoom out so I can show you. Now you see how there's a transition from the foreground grass to the almost mid-ground grass and then to the trees. This tree would look a lot like this one in terms of color. I can show you really quickly what it would look like here. We put the same sort of highlight on there. And you could play around with, you know, putting different washes and opacities on this. But you want the a similar texture, a same opacity, it's the same species of tree. And you even want it to be a little more brown because it's closer than the other tree that we painted up with those those tans and browns. But you still want a little bit of that blue to show through. You want to get darker over here. Take down the opacity a little bit. Maybe it gets dark there and there. You want that high contrast anyway, so it's okay if that happens. And notice how you know this misty grass layer is over that. So even if I you know put some more shadows down here with a, with that brown, it's not affecting that layer. Same thing over here with this tree. So we're gonna take a little more of this and just put a couple more highlights there so you can get a nice transition. You want to go too crazy with the detail, but you do want it to be pretty detailed because it's the, it is the cl the closest tree. You also don't want it to be too coarse because or rough because a tree like this is often smooth. So you want to sort of feather things out as you paint. But anyway, let's see how it looks from far away. So then on this tree, for instance, you're going to want some some browns, but they can't be too brown because you want it to seem like it's a little further away. So we'll start on this side. We'll add some darks in there, but you can still see the brown because we're using low opacity brushes. You want a little bit of a smaller brush, larger, or more opacity rather. Working on that same tree layer. And we want this color, which we can take with eye or the eye dropper, and we'll make it a little lower opacity. Opacities play a big part in this process. And then we'll put that there as well. A little bit of that there, but we still want a lot of that blue to show through, and we don't want a lot of contrast. Oops. Get rid of that. The contrast will help it advance, and that's what we don't want, because we want this tree to be a little further back. So it's looking a little further back from this one and this one because we kept a lot of that blue. 
And you could even do a little bit of that to this tree as well. Just keep it subtle, give it light. So that we have a good sense that these trees are, you know, part of the environment and they're integrated in terms of atmospheric perspective. So that illustrates my point about atmospheric perspective. And I'm not going to finish the piece, but I'll put some finishing touches so that you, you know what to do when you get to that stage. Um, you don't want just like, you know, tufts of grass and maybe a couple ferns. You want some other stuff in there. You want some, you know, some ferns that are highlighted a little bit. So let's go back to uh, layer five. And we're just going to, as we wrap this up, select this color here. Get a little lighter. And then we're going to put in maybe a couple little little flowers and things. So since it's detail, I'm just going to reduce my brush size and increase my opacity and put a, a couple little flowers in there. Maybe the, some hints of other leaves and other things that are that are growing there that have more hardy or broad leaves. You want a good variety in the foreground of different different things, especially when you're painting a, like an outdoor scene like this. You want a good variety of different leaf shapes, different species of plants, flowers. You know, because when you go outside, you see all sorts of stuff like this and. You want it to be believable. You want the environment to be believable, whatever you're painting. You want a lot of those flowers and things and ferns and shrubs and clovers and, and a lot of these you don't really have to do too much to. Because some of these highlights, you know, you just throw in there. It's implied that they have stems and that they're, you know, sort of hovering above the surface of the other grasses and things like that. So look at your reference and try to pick some of those out as well. And make sure they transition to, you know, the top of the, the grass covering or the forest floor covering, at least at the, the edge of the forest. You can even put some more highlights on your, your ferns and put a couple more here. But it's all about that, you know, that, that contrast there. Then you can introduce some, some different colors and things. And you can do this incrementally by just, you know, starting with like a low opacity and you know, using some of the colors that you see in the trees. You can get as saturated as you want but I'm trying to keep this a little more natural and desaturated just to show you that you can add all sorts of other colors and things. Maybe some reds. And there's some you know, little flowers in the background there. and so on. So eventually, you know, I'll go back and um, do all of what I did here to this strip right here. And you can see that there's a nice mist there. 
And then I would touch up these trees, do the same thing I did to the trunk, to the branches of these trees, especially right here. And I would you know, maybe do a little more detail here using this same value, the darker value of you know, that, that original blue. And maybe a couple of bushes and things. And then I'd pretty much be done. So this is almost halfway done. Um, and I was going pretty fast, so I needed to clean up a couple things, but luckily I had different layers. So I can go back and erase things and touch things up um, fairly easily. But anyway, that's the environment painting demo for forests and, and grass and brush and things like that. And uh, thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time.